Hi again guys and welcome to of course another review, another breakdown of a specific car from the 1.29 patch and obviously leading on from the tune setup earlier on today for N200 for this same car. It was of course going to be the Subaru 22B STI version of the iconic Impreza. Now we've discussed Evos before, we've even looked at this specific Impreza before in Gran Turismo 6, but now of course it's updated for the first time ever in the franchise, it's a full premium. I'm personally hoping that that same treatment is also applied to the DC2 Integra, which has also never been featured as a premium, despite, funnily enough, having quite a few different versions in the series, but none of them have ever had an interior. Now, in the case of this car, it was a prime example of a car which was obvious to pick. Of course, why wouldn't you bring the car back? Why wouldn't you update it? It's such an iconic car, one of the most exclusive and most valuable Subarus ever built. Certainly one of the most exclusive variations of the STI, the Impreza overall. And of course, it's a homologation vehicle, although it's much newer than many other homologation cars that you would typically think of, like Quattros, Deltas, 205T16s, Renault 5 Turbos, that kind of stuff, but very clearly that same kind of idea behind the car. The blistered arches, more power, lower weight, and a limited production run. Now, the car has a reputation for a reason. This is not just a car that rests on its laurels, and that's actually one of the things that I respect the most from both Subaru and Mitsubishi when it comes to the rally world. They did not just win once and then never try again or go downhill from there. They continued updating the cars in a very Porsche 911 style way. Very Porsche 911 way in the case of the Subaru, of course, with the choice of engine. But they continually made it better. And of course that's a very Japanese thing to do, because although you would hope that any car gets better with each new generation, you could argue that not all do. Some cars get slower with a newer generation or not quite as good, and sometimes that can even happen in Japan. Look at the Toyota Celica for instance. The ZZT231 from the late 90s with front wheel drive is arguably not as impressive a performance car as something like an ST205, the rally legend. But Japan typically does a good job of making the cars improved every time. And this one was, of course, the pinnacle for its time in the late 90s. And it's, it's just got that, well, the homologation special vibe to it, which guarantees that it's going to be a collector's item in the real world and in a game. It's got the performance to match that status. And it's also a car which would be a great investment in terms of keeping its value sometimes even potentially increasing in value. Something like a, a Peugeot 205 T16 or a, a Lancia Delta S4, you're looking at six figures easily for a car like that. Of course, the Ford RS200 as well. You can easily pay a quarter of a million pounds for a car like that. Some of them don't quite keep that much, like the Mercedes 190e or the Audi Quattro. They sometimes drop a little bit, but even then, you're looking essentially at Maserati money for one of those cars. Now, the Subaru doesn't seem to hold that kind of value, which in part is probably because of its age, the fact that it's not a Group B homologation car, it's a much, much later WRC machine. However, don't let that fool you. This car is an absolute weapon. And although it's not as quick as it was in, for instance, Gran Turismo 6, it certainly is not slow. You can still tune this car's 2.2 litre boxer engine to well over 500 horsepower. The acceleration is brutal. It's fantastic off the line. Top speed, it's a Subaru. So, of course, it's not trying to rival something like a Ferrari for top end performance, but it's certainly not slow, that's for sure. But it's the trackability overall that makes this car such a weapon. In a similar way to something like a, a Porsche GT3 RS and a couple of others too, especially in the older games there were tons of examples, it's just one of those cars which gets the job done. It really is as simple as that. It's like the rally equivalent of something like a Nissan GTR. There's nothing there that doesn't need to be, no frills, no gimmicks really. The blistered arches are about as close to a gimmick as you can get, and even then, they serve a purpose. The wider track, lower centre of gravity, more stability through corners. The fact that it's the two-door, so slightly shorter, again, making it that much more purposeful, reduces body roll, stiffer chassis, etc. So it's this pure, hardcore, rally-bred machine, which 
really, you could say justifiably, is only a road car on a technicality. Really, this is as close to a production spec rally car as you can really get, especially from Subaru, because their road going regular STI models, they have rally DNA, but there are some which are basically actual rally cars that just don't have livery, and this is kind of one of those. It's got that Daihatsu Story Across 4 kind of vibe to it. Now, in terms of whether or not you should buy one, well, of course you should. It's a 50,000 credit car, which is reasonably expensive, but that's what it used to be anyway. And again, it's a homologation car, so it's certainly worth the money, I would say, purely as a collector's piece, if nothing else. But as it happens, it's the kind of collector's piece that I actually like the most, and that is ones which look fantastic as a piece in the center of a collection. But they can still win races even today against much newer rivals, sometimes even rivals within the same category like WRC, and not many cars that are collector's cars, like classics for instance, sports cars, race cars, not many of them are actually still good enough to take on their modern equivalents. Understandably, some still can, and this is definitely one of those which can. This can easily take on any modern all-wheel drive car and give it a fantastic run for its money. You put this thing up against a car, even which has a similar amount of power, for instance, like a Mitsubishi Evo 10, you could say like a Golf R, for instance, something with a similar kind of spec. But this, nine times out of 10, will still win, even without tuning it, because it's just a great car. Now, it probably sounds like I absolutely adore the 22B, Yes and no. I'm not a huge Subaru fan, I'm not a huge fan of any of the Imprezas overall, but this is my Impreza of choice. It's my favourite of them overall, and I think the reason why I like it so much is because it really is that nod to the Group B monsters on the street, like the Delta, the Quattro, and even from the touring car world with the 190E and the BMW E30 M3, and to me that just makes it that much more desirable. What's unarguable is that this is the pinnacle of the Impreza. This is pretty much unarguably the ultimate Impreza ever made. There are faster ones, there are more powerful ones, but that doesn't make them better. This is the all-round package, it's the ultimate street machine, which is technically as close to a rally car as you can really get, and if you haven't bought it yet, you should. Because even if you're not a huge Subaru fan, like I'm not, purely from the point of view of this being an absolute weapon to drive, it's worth getting. It's a fantastic cornering machine with a certain way of tuning in particular or ways of tuning such as the setup that I did earlier today. You will uh, you'll have your mind blown basically by how good this thing can be through corners. Extremely forgiving, very beginner friendly and that's something which even for Group B homologation cars you can't always say, sometimes they're not forgiving at all. This one is, it's got the entire package, which again is the exact reason why I said it is the Nissan GTR of its time and of the homologation world. So overall that's it for this particular pick, of course check out the tune at the end of this video by clicking through or you can check out tons of other JDM car reviews that I've done also by clicking through here at the end. But for now, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>